Happy Monday, everybody. As promised, I am going to talk Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker today. Uh, but it was the first night of Hanukkah last night, so I'm wearing my Hanukkah shirt. This is how we do it. And you know what? This is how we do it. Because the regular, the, the This Is How We Do It song goes, This is how we do it. It's Friday night. Shamba's candles light. The hala's here on the table. Uh, that is not the lyrics, obviously. Anybody who's played Saints Row 4 knows that. But this is how we do it. It's Hanukkah. Yeah, I'm allowed. Okay, so I'm not going to do a Christmas Patreon jingle today. I'm going to do become a patron, become a patron, become a patron, patreon.com. Hey, patreon.com slash Lana K. Havana Gila for the win. Yeah, I'm a little punchy. It's that time. But also, I know this video is going to inspire some rage. Now, remember, fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to the dark side. This is why I find it so strange, the number of people who get blindingly enraged over Star Wars. But here's the way this is going to work. I'm going to give you my general thoughts for people who haven't seen it yet. And then I am going to do a big, wavy, flashy spoiler alert so you, you guys can stop watching. And then I'll get into the nitty gritty nuts and bolts of things. So overall, top line. I went in with extremely low expectations because I find that as, you know, the as one of the older Star Wars nerds, um, I I have to go in with low expectations because I was kind of a jerk with the the prequels. And then I found out that my friend's kids really liked the prequels. And I was like, well, I'm going to stop being a cranky nerd and just shut up about my thoughts and find out what they liked about it. And there were various things they liked about it. It was their speed. Because uh, I remember when I was a kid and grownups would, would crap on the stuff I liked. And I always thought the grownups who did that were kind of jerks. So I didn't want to be that. So the, the prequels softened me up for these. And... It, in light of that, I did, I did enjoy the movie. Now, I have enjoyed elements of all three of, of episodes seven, eight, and nine. I've enjoyed elements of all three. I did not hate The Last Jedi. I did not like the creative direction. It was just, you know, for me, the chance to see um, Carrie Fisher and Mark Hamill um, on the screen again in The Last Jedi was enough and... You know, their performances were so good. And, and, you know, knowing that Mark Hamill completely disagreed with all the creative direction, he just did his job and turned out an absolutely wonderful performance uh, in The Last Jedi, um, that, that, that made me happy, just respecting his craft. But I, I've not enjoyed, like... I've had issues with the direction they went in. My my big issue from the beginning of these new non-prequels, um, sequels, I guess you could call them. Uh, yeah, that's what they are. They're sequels. Uh, but the way they tried to shove aside the old cast to go, look, shiny young people. Um, I didn't like that from the beginning. And so maybe I'm, um, I, I still didn't like that about uh, these movies. I would have liked more screen time for the older actors. Um, but I still enjoyed the film for what they were. I thought that having just, you know, the three amigos of Poe, Finn, and Ray on the screen in the same place for meaningful periods of time helped along this movie in in a way that the the others when your three main characters don't intersect structurally your movie is broken um i thought that the the additions of uh dio the little lampy droid uh and oh, what's his name babu frick i love babu freak whatever there's like a, a crazy like <laughs> alien babu freak you know i love that stuff i just love that stuff that's one of the things i go into star wars 
hoping for. You guys know that my favorite moment of the latest Avengers movies uh, was Meek eating pizza on the couch with Dad Bod Thor. Like, he's just eating pizza. I, I love movie aliens, so there was some good kind of cameo a- aliens. It's still hit all the beats in a way that it's like, can can we please just relax this Star Wars thing of there must be a cantina scene, there must be, you know, a chase scene. I guess you need a chase scene in every action movie, but the there must be a cantina scene tends to create some very forced moments. Um, like I said, this isn't a spoiler because there must be a cantina scene. Um, the... The way they used um, leftover footage of Carrie Fisher was truly remarkable. And you do see the cast really working their hardest in those moments. All of the younger cast members seem to come alive when there's a uh, an older, you know, one, one of the original people on the screen. Um you know, even even Billy D, like Billy D, gets his moment, Lando. Um, but you know, you you really, you really felt like the actors cared in those moments more than in other moments. Um, that that being said, the the whole movie, and like I said, I enjoyed it overall. The whole movie felt to me like J.J. Abrams saw the backlash to Last Jedi, went online, cobbled together the most popular fan theories of a lot of things and put them in a movie in one way or another. Um, He does answer many questions that that people felt left unsatisfied um, after The Last Jedi. they they have certainly attempted to de Mary Sue uh, Ray in a way that I almost found annoying. It, it was I felt like that was almost too forced in places. They were they were working very hard to give some of the male characters inexplicable skills. Um, I, I maintain that Ray's unbelievable awesomeness is is now to an extent explained. I will get into more of that in the spoiler section. Um, I, I felt like there was a liveliness to the way many of the characters delivered their dialogue that was la- certainly lacking in The Last Jedi. That there was just a greater feeling of the characters having fun. Even Adam Driver, who never seems to have fun, cracks some sincere smiles in in this in this movie. Um it was so fan servicey that I felt myself going, "Oh, I wish they'd done that and I wish they'd done that." I had to stop myself from doing that because there was no way they could possibly put everything in. Um and overall, I feel like that I think the Star Wars movies have people have forgotten what they started off as a fun Saturday afternoon popcorn movie. What are those? I know there used to be kind of kid and teen friendly action movies that they ran on Saturday afternoons um, that were just intended to be fun. And George Lucas mimicked that serialized. That's why it starts with episode four. It was an homage to the old serial movies. And that's all it was ever intended to be. It was space opera. It was space Western. And unlike the hard science fiction, things like more Star Star Trek, though people argue that Star Trek is no longer hard science fiction, um, the difference between space opera and and hard science fiction is things happen in space opera and you're not exactly supposed to question why. It's because they can. And um, 
I think that the space opera was a better known thing back in the 70s when Star Wars got its start. Now people are very not receptive to that. And so they try to explain a lot and I get why they're trying to adapt it to this new reality because not explaining stuff just didn't work. Um, I, I think that if they had started off on the footing they landed on, on Rise of Skywalker, the entire sequel trilogy would have gotten a better reception. Um, but it didn't. And personally, I think that a lot of the negativity surrounding this movie goes back to lingering hard feelings about The Last Jedi. Because Ryan Johnson just pushed the audience too far in terms of it, it wasn't that it wasn't that people were challenged. It wasn't that people were shocked. It it was that Ryan Johnson violated the character of Luke Skywalker so badly that the actor who played him had to say so. And I'm glad he did. You know, I'm I'm glad he didn't. I'm glad Mark Hamill didn't let himself be hung out to dry by creative directions he didn't agree with. That was totally fair for him to say. But I I do think. Um, there's a lot of throwing shade at The Last Jedi in, in moments in, um, in Rise of Skywalker. Um, and, and you are going to have to put a few things together for yourself, which is something I like doing. But if you want everything explained, the movie is not going to do that. Um, I, I like things being left up to my interpretation because I like to tell myself stories, but not everybody does. So be aware um, with that. And I hope I've sort of set expectations going in for people so that you can enjoy it and not go in with such crazy high hype expectations that you end up disappointed, right? Because the only way you're disappointed is if you go in expecting something freaking amazing and 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 it's just okay so I suggest you go into it thinking it's just gonna be okay so you're pleasantly surprised um you know I was not I was not incredibly wowed by anything because so much of it was just throwbacks to the original trilogy but I enjoyed it I, I think that uh, Finn has things to do. Uh, there is a, a much more clear focus on the three, the three main characters from this series of movies that never really got a chance to be main characters. And I still maintain that they, they never really got a chance to be characters, even Rey. This, this is a closing off of the Skywalker saga. And so it's a lot of old stuff packaged as new hotness. If you go into that expecting that, it's a very nice homage film. I think it does, it does, it is very respectful, unlike The Last Jedi, to the source material and the original actors. That was enough for me. If you don't have the same nostalgia for the original movies that I do, it may not be enough for you. And uh, so now that's the spoiler free part. So if you don't want spoilers, stop watching now. Okay, just stop watching now. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Okay, going forward. Okay, ready? You turned it off. Last warning, spoilers ahead. Okay, so about those FUs to The Last Jedi. Pretty much every moment... Mark Hamill is on screen, is an F.U. to The Last Jedi. From his reveal of, you know, she's going to toss the lightsaber and he catches it and said a Jedi weapon should not be tossed away in such way. F.U. The Last Jedi, you know, uh, when, but what about, I thought you said the Jedi need to be destroyed. I was wrong. F.U. The Last Jedi. And he seemed to enjoy it. I did 
One of the things you have to know about J.J. Abrams is that he creates a mystery box and then doesn't know what's what's inside the box. And that's very telling in this because I, I did like the essentially going along with the fan belief that Snoke was Palpatine uh, by way of clones that you see in a vat. Um, nice touch. Though I don't think that was telegraphed from the beginning. I also don't think Ray was Palpatine's granddaughter. A detail that did leak accurately long before the movie came out. But I don't think that um, that was the original plan. I mean, yeah, Daisy Ridley has a British accent, which didn't make sense until then. But why wouldn't you get somebody that looked more like a Palpatine and less like uh, a Skywalker. Maybe okay, she takes on the name Skywalker at the end, but still, you know, Mark Hamill's blonde, or was, you You could have made her look less like a, a tofu rendering of Carrie Fisher, you know? Um, I would have, I would have bought it more if, there wasn't this Star Wars girl look that she fit into. Um, but but that's, I mean, I won't, I won't defend that to the hilt. That would just have been my preference. I would have preferred this stuff clearly been locked in from the beginning. Like they knew where they were going and they stuck to it. But that wasn't how they did it. I think the handoff format didn't work. Um... I suspect they will not be doing that again. Um, because one of the things that I think was nice and and very, um, very true in some ways to the originals was the whole redemption of, um, you know, the, the, the saving of Ben Solo. Um... In order for that to have worked for me, the reason it worked with Darth Vader is Darth Vader was both a bad dude and a bad ass. He had legitimate menace that Kylo Ren never had. Now, part of the problem was that the whole explanation of the Knights of Ren was relegated to a comic book, which is kind of interesting. It turns out they're basically like a biker gang that worships lightsabers which is why Kylo Ren's lightsaber is kind of busted. Um, so, you know, that moment where he gets, like, Luke's lightsaber and, like, fights all the Knights of Ren with it, that was more poignant for me because I I knew the comic story. Uh, but it would have been nice if that was in a movie. So they could have done more with that in the movie. Um I thought it was kind of silly to introduce uh, the Carrie Russell character. I can never remember her name because she just looks so much like a Power Ranger to me. Um, that just struck me as a character designed to sell toys and didn't really have much of a plot point. I thought that the um, the uh, deserted stormtroopers um, were a better addition. And the thing I liked about that is it tied in the ending of The Last Jedi, you know, where the, the kid kind of, the broom snaps in his hand, the idea that the Force just disseminated. And there was always this thing about, you know, Finn probably being Force sensitive. Now he very clearly was. But, like, the way I took that was um, when that kind of force when Luke kind of gave himself to the galaxy or whatever, you know, in my mind, it, it spurred a bunch of mutinies where people finally like found their individual selves. And that's how I took it. So I really enjoyed that. But getting back to the whole Ben Solo, Kylo Ren thing, the moment, the scene with Harrison Ford was, was wonderful. The whole uh, turn on the, I love you. I know. Um, a bit kind of like he didn't say the line, 
which I guess is kind of cool, but not cool. Uh, I have never liked that whole Ray and him having a connection thing. It it didn't totally work for me, but, you know, okay, the way they ended it, it the twist you saw coming a mile away with the two lightsabers and all that stuff. I did think it was cool that Leia finally got a lightsaber. Um, and I read the... Han Solo appearing to his son in his time of need um, as um, as Leia kind of putting her thumb on the scale that way because she's apparently crazy ass powerful like they sure make it out to be which, which you know the, the way they backfilled that she very well could be. How funny was it? How much training did they show? Like training, 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 training. Like Ray is training. Look, everybody, Ray is training. The thing is, she sucked more after she trained than before. But the fact that she is Palpatine's grandmother, grandfather, granddaughter. Oh my god! And is that strong in the Force? Kind of explains why she's inexplicably awesome at so many things because. This is a world where we're supposed to believe that a six-year-old can win a pod race, you know? I, I can stretch belief if, if that's the case. Uh, a six-year-old has enough muscle strength to control all those hydraulics. Um, I, I can believe that somebody with the power of Palpatine's granddaughter can... can um... But that was another F you, The Last Jedi, right? Because it was so very much, your parents are nothing, because they chose to be. But you are Palpatine's granddaughter, right? Like, it was, it was an F you. Um, but the whole, and, and I've, I've been having, like, non-conversations online with people about the problem with sort of the Star Wars theory of redemption, that no matter how gross you are during your life, one good one good sacrificial deed kind of wipes the slate clean. Okay, you're absolved. Uh, now, we never do see um, Ben Solo as a force ghost, so possibly he, he didn't. But, I mean, Anakin Skywalker did. And Anakin Skywalker did some gross-ass shit. Um, so, so there are some philosophical issues in terms of a world building perspective the message that you know no one is beyond redemption i i would have had a problem if they'd had ray and you know ben all happily ever after it um i would have had issues had he survived and you know oh everybody was just okay with everything he did um, cause he was a little fucking twerp. Um, and I did like that there was the consequence of Hux hating him so badly that he didn't care if the rebels won as long as Kylo Ren lost. And I, I really like that detail because that's, that's honest. Like that is the, that's the reality of ruling out of fear and all the freaking special treatment that you know Kylo Ren was never a leader but I, and I, I really wish that Ray and Ben had not kissed I know they wanted to reenact the big kiss but I think that crossed a line for me I didn't want to see crossed and again that's I can't say it's wrong. I objectively, I can just say I didn't like it. It was a cheesy homage that they'd already done with Rose and Finn. It came out of nowhere there too. Um, I would have been better with them being more Jedi and, and Sith or, or save Jedi, you know, reclaim Jedi than uh, any sort of boyfriendy, girlfriendy dynamic. I just didn't, I was it was too ick for me, um, especially since Jedi are not supposed to form attachments. So WTF. Um, all right. Whoops. Um, I've always thought that's kind of BS to begin with. Jedi can't form attachments. I, I think that that your goodness 
is strengthened from attachments. Though I, I did find it, you know, very poignant at the end when it's Luke and Leia as Force Ghosts back on Tatooine with Rey. Um, you know, I guess because Han wasn't strong in the Force, again, I guess because Leia put down her lightsaber, she was allowed to form attachments. I don't know. Like, there, there are some holes in this, I admit. Or maybe pre-existing attachments don't count. I don't know. Um, but, you know, um, the fact that, you know, and, and they had her and Han split up. So that kind of makes sense to me. But the fact that Ben wasn't there was also kind of a big, if that's deliberate, interesting um very interesting um the the fact that at the end of it all her greatest sort of attachment was to her brother was kind of cool in its own way I'm not sure it was as well thought out as I just thought it out but I thought that was was kind of cool and the way they I mean I think George Lucas very much would approve because he's so into the hero's journey that it, you know, it, it, it ends where it begins back on Tatooine in that little, you know, desert igloo kind of thing. I think, I think he'd approve of that. It, it, it landed in a good place. Um, as I said in the, in the not, in the not spoilery part, uh, the way they worked in those lines of Carrie Fisher's, um, I think those tears on Oscar Isaac were legitimate. You could see Daisy Ridley just working her her heart out in those moments. Those actors were touched. And when Chewie just breaks down, I think that that was sort of a really important moment for everybody. Like, I think he was kind of feeling on... That was the way kind of everybody felt when when she passed away. But at the end, the fact that they basically had Leia save the entire galaxy by saving her son. Because Ray didn't save Ben Solo. Leia did. Leia had that moment. And, and my theory is that she made Han appear to him. Because um, otherwise, that whole thing is just kind of weird. Like, okay, he's crazy. He's seen his dead dad. Um, but, uh, um, like, that whole, you're just in my mind. Well, yeah, but that's a really, like, that's a really vivid memory. I think it was Leia. Because you notice, she didn't go non-corporeal until he did. So she was still around, just not in her body before then. Very interesting point for me. Um, but so she saved him and therefore he saved Ray and therefore the galaxy was saved. Also, by the way, she trained Poe and to an extent she trained everybody, right? She trained Ray. She trained Poe about how to be a leader. She trained Finn to have something to do. Like she just trained everybody. Leia just saved everything where everybody else like gave up or gave in or faltered. Leia's awesome. And I, I, that maybe was why I kind of went out of it going, okay, okay, respect, which was probably part of where they were going to go from the beginning. Um, I think if they had wanted to do kind of a girl power deal, they should have played that angle up from the beginning because I think everybody kind of agreed going in the Princess Leia was awesome. And, you know having this other little whippersnapper be awesome. Even though, like I said, it's kind of understandable that um, in a world where a six-year-old can win a pod race, um, where on, you know, our timeline, he wouldn't be old enough to drive. Um, somebody can know how to fly. Apparently the force just makes you a really good pilot. Because you trust your feelings and stuff. Um, I'm not saying that makes sense. I'm just saying it makes it didn't make sense long before Ray did it. Um, 
I, I do see why people wouldn't buy that when her parents were nobodies. Now that they've, they're not nobodies. They were nobodies because they choose to be. Um, it's a, it's a little, it's easier to swallow. I think, um, you know, the the force spreading out and causing stormtroopers to defect explains why Finn had that lightsaber in episode seven and, and all that stuff. It probably would have been smarter in retrospect for um, Disney to just give J.J. Abrams all three movies, because even though it was it was just fan fiction, but so was so was Ryan Johnson's treatment of Luke. It was it was bad fan fiction. Right. At least at least J.J. Abrams was able to tell more satisfying, less irritating fan fiction. Um, and again, I didn't hate The Last Jedi. I just yeah, it it was a violation of of Luke's character. But thanks to Mark Hamill, I knew that going in. And so I could sort of set expectations again. And um that's why I kind of think, I mean, I, I think what's next for the, the Star Wars franchise is they're going to let the movies rest for a while. They've made back their money on the Star Wars license. Um, they're, I, I suspect because the Disney Plus series um, is getting, you know, such good feedback, they're going to focus on... Uh, series because ever since the original three movies the the series have always been um better right like rebels and clone wars were imminently more watchable than um uh, than any of the movies though i was kind of disappointed that solo did so poorly because i was kind of hoping that you know um there, there was going to be some rebel stuff in there because of, you know, Darth Maul. Um, but, uh, you know, they, they do... See, the modern Star Wars makers seem to do a better job at the TV shows, perhaps because there is no requirement to, to create just okay for this, you know massive fan base that you have to satisfy. There's all these little demographics you have to give something for um, in in a movie that you don't in a TV show. You can make this TV show for this audience and this TV show for this audience. So you don't, you don't have to market a TV show like insanely the way you do a movie. So I suspect they are going to make it a Disney Plus property um, for the foreseeable future. I I do not expect a um, Disney seems to kind of be in a rest mode with kind of all their main properties right now. They're giving Marvel a rest. They're giving Star Wars a rest, except for their their streaming service. That that seems to be where they're going. Maybe they're sick of having to pander to the Chinese making films. I don't know, but. Um, there's there's def there's definitely a pivot, and I think that's for the best. I think that these um, these movies. I, I think that you know, for as awful as the prequels were for me, they did have a vision. They did have a new story to tell. That I didn't think. Episodes 7, 8, and 9 did. Episodes 7, 8, and 9 were a bunch of callbacks with new actors to the older movies in their best moments. In their worst moments, they were attempting to paper over and replace the old movies not well. And I just think the whole thing got off on a bad foot from, oh no, we really have to make, we really have to make the new cast front and center. And the old cast, well, they're just along for the ride because they're old. Nobody cares about them. They were wrong. And they were so wrong that the whole thing just stumbled out of the gate. People had a feeling that they didn't like. And I think in a lot of ways they, and I'm not saying this is conscious, they just looked for stuff to blame. And that's why, like, Ray's and Mary Sue became a thing and, you know, um, 
because uh, because there there was really no explanation for why Luke was as good a pilot as he was either. I mean, uh, you know, driving around land speeders on Tatooine does not prepare you for intergalactic space travel, right? And he was he was like an awesome pilot. First movie, boom, trust your feeling. No training. He had no Jedi training because you know Obi Wan got dead uh, because he trains with Yoda in the second movie. So, you know, but again, different audience expectations. Like in the 70s, you could go, well, he's a Jedi and an awesome pilot and all this stuff. And everybody just went, well, of course he is. He's the main character. The main character does all these amazing things. The rest of us can't. It, it was the Cold War. We were all looking for a Superman style figure to, to just save us. And we didn't ask questions. Now things are different. And... You know, it may be that that idealistic everybody can be can be saved message just doesn't resonate. Um, and obviously not everybody can be saved because Palpatine couldn't be saved, but most people can be saved. As, as long as there are people in the world who care about you, you can be saved. That's kind of that very 70s message that, that Star Wars brought with it. And, you know, maybe, maybe that just doesn't resonate anymore. That makes me kind of sad, but it's, it's not like, it's not like the previous, it's not like the original three movies were flawless. People don't remember how poorly reviewed everything but Empire Strikes Back was. Return of the Jedi was panned. A New Hope was panned. You know, the only well-reviewed Star Wars movie has been The Last Jedi and um, and Empire Strikes Back. So, you know, take that for what you will. That doesn't mean that you have to like the movie. You know, you're allowed to be disappointed in the movie. Disappointment, again, is expectations plus or minus actual outcome. So... If you didn't like the movie, that's cool. You didn't like the movie. I, the the uh, the original movies, I will fight you on. The original three, I thought they were all like a ton of fun. I thought these movies were were fun, but they could have been more fun. They kind of overthought the fun and made it less fun, but they were still fun for what they were. Um, I I ended up looking a lot of the time of where they put the ramps for BB-8 and Debo Dio to go up. Um, and I, I very much enjoyed C-3PO getting trashed in a completely different way again. Um, that, that, but again, again, that's a callback. That's a, this has all happened before kind of thing. And I think the sense of disappointment that some people feel is there just weren't enough new ideas. And that's totally fair. I, I didn't go in there. Um, really expecting much again. So it was like, that was pretty much what I expected. All right. Um, you know, compared to, uh, movies that I went into with very low expectations, like, you know, the Captain Marvel movie. I, I, I enjoyed, um, I enjoyed, um, the Rise of Skywalker more than I enjoyed either Infinity War movie or Captain Marvel. I did not enjoy it as much as Black Panther. Not, not in the slightest. So, so take that for what you will. Um, it, you know, Black Panther was a whole bunch of, yes, they're from the comics, but they were new takes. Even, even from the uh, Tanahasi Coates um run on Black Panther that they borrowed from heavily there were new ideas in Black Panther uh some of them worked some of them didn't work but there were new ideas um the and there were new ideas in don't get me wrong there were new ideas in um in Infinity War and Endgame I just don't go to those movies to be sad and there was a lot of sad in those movies, I, I I want happy in those movies. Like, to me, Thor Ragnarok, that's my speed, right? First Captain America movie, even with, like, the, tr the sort of tragic romantic ending, that's my speed. That's what I want 
from those movies. I don't I don't want grim dark. I don't want um y- you know I I want to punch something. I want to punch something right now. Everything every time I think about, you know, Spider-Man getting Thanosed. I just want to just makes me angry. Um I don't I don't go to those movies for that purpose. I go to those movies to be uplifted. And I think that 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 was what made Rise of Skywalker kind of work for me even though it was it was kind of a do over mess in places was that at the end it did feel um even though as some people point out Ray really didn't get an arc they so rushed her struggle with the dark side and that I think is a legitimate criticism um just basically everything Ray and Kylo didn't work Daisy Ridley's very dynamic. She's cute. You know, I'm, I'm sure she'll go on to have an Emma Watson style career because Emma Watson is aging out of certain parts now. Uh, Daisy Ridley can just drop right in. There's always parts for that kind of actress in uh, in Hollywood. But, um, it, you know, that that didn't work for me, but a lot of the other stuff did. And enough of the other stuff did that I was okay with the movie as a whole. And I just liked... It was the right message for the right time, the same way Death Stranding was the right message for the right time for me. Um, of sometimes um, striking down your foe, obliterating your enemy is not the right call. And that was uplifting enough that I can go, yeah, okay, that was worth the money, you know? Um, so that and there were two guys in the theater right off the top who were yelling out fake spoilers, uh, which I thought was fun. That's part of the experience of seeing it in a theater is that kind of communal experience that way. So that was cool. And I've, I've never seen, I, I kind of live sort of in the country. And so the, the local movie theater near me is not busy ever. You know, um, Endgame got tickets, no problem. Captain Marvel got tickets, no problem. I'm talking like opening night, no problem. Like opening weekend, no, nothing was ever sold out. I've never had to get tickets in advance. I checked just because my husband was like, you better get tickets in advance. And so I checked and I'm like, whoa, like the seven o'clock show was already sold out. Like a, like three showings were sold out. We had to see like the 1050 show because it was like, whoa, um, that never happens up near us. So... Clearly, it's going to make a ton of money for Disney, even not doing well with China. And that's what it's designed to do. Like, that's my same feeling about those those uh, last two Avengers movies. They weren't intended to be great art. They were intended to make tons and tons and tons of money. Captain Marvel, too, right? Like, Captain Marvel was just stretch that nerd tax. Let's get him for three movies instead of just two, right? They did what they were designed to do. I can't criticize that because that was the intent on TV, you know, stuff like the Mandalorian, which I will eventually watch. I'm just not getting Disney plus for one show. Um, and the expanse is on, which, Oh my God, if you have not seen the expanse so good, but, um, I expect to enjoy the Mandalorian as a series more. Um, but all that stuff about, Ray being violenced against women. That's just ridiculous. Yeah, there's actually somebody wrote a hot take that it was an abusive relationship. It's like, have you not seen Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi? Like, have you not? Anyway, <coughs> that went on very long. Nobody's probably still watching. But if you like this kind of stuff, um, these tend to be lower rated, though it's Star Wars. So it might be different. People want to angry over it. But if you like this kind of content, um, the patron support is appreciated. Become a patron. Become a patron. Become a patron. Patreon.com. Hey, patreon.com slash Lana K. I messed up the tune on that. Anyway, um, the rest of this week will be pre-recorded. Um, so no feedback Friday this week per se because I need some I need some rest and I, I need to finish a boss fight script and do the costumes. But uh, have a great holiday, everybody. More the official holiday videos tomorrow. Okay.